this is a quick video I made of a jig that I want to create so I can machine a flat edge on a bit of dowling which was 4mm in diameter and it had to have a flat edge on either side and I was wondering if I could do it uh, watch the video very interesting how it come out so I don't know if you can see the flats this is the end result okay so watch the video, it's worth it. It'll save you a lot of time. Not that time is very important when you model making, but in um, this day and age, anything we could save to make things quicker and easier, more so easier than quicker, I'll be the first one to try and do that. Enjoy. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm taking a little task here. What I've got, it's got this high speed uh, Ryobi um, uh, like a Dremel. It actually does the same function as a Dremel but probably about a quarter of the price. Um, I bought it a few years ago when my Dremel blew up, I needed something quickly so I went and bought this along with all the gear that it comes with in this container here um, yeah, full of goodies I have I spoke about it in the past when I've been carving on other jobs and you might have seen it anyway, I just bought myself a model kit for a touch Concord Coach 1848 and uh, I thought I'd give it a go. I was going to make my own model Concordia but um, I couldn't justify buying a lathe, a small lathe and plus a milling machine for making up uh, certain parts my bushes and all that because I didn't want it so uh, I couldn't justify a lathe anyway I wanted to do this Concord I wanted to make it so what I uh, I compromised and I said well I'll buy a kit and that way I don't have to worry about anything about bushing and correct making things up and all that you can't just drill a piece of hole a hole in a piece of wood and put a shaft to it and let it's going to spin perfectly around. I can guarantee you that. And, um, and it's got to be some accurate machining. And I was setting up my lathe, which is over here. Wood lathe. Um, which I made many years ago. I need to put an extension on there. Never use the extension, but it's a very handy thing. If I could get a compound travelling slide or something that would sit on top of there and marries up to my height, I probably could do a little bit of my hand machining of steel parts and bushes and all that with it. So, besides that, I've decided to. Um, to make this model. But of course, you know, anything that you buy these days is quickly made and a lot of work's got to be done by yourself. To do this model making of ships and all this, it, it takes a lot of work and you've got to start from a certain, there's certain grades of, uh, uh, of modeling, make, model making. You can start off and putting a couple little bits together and you get into big, more complicated big ships and all this and then then all of a sudden you get a bit further on and a lot of things you've got to make yourself. So I went on the internet and I had a look and this guy says it took him six hours to put a flat on this piece of wood on either side there and corresponding 180 degrees there. 
Now, that is to me, um, it took him six hours to put the flats on, but he said it's six hours to do the whole lot. Well, I, I did that. Now, we're going to take about half a mil off that side there, and I thought, well, how the heck can you do that accurately and, and make sure it's running true? So I've come about making a jig. So what I, they did mention in the plans that you use one of these and just run across the top like that. You can imagine what could happen to the spiral, uh, to the uh, flat on either side of this piece of wood. It would uh, run off of so. <laughs> like a tree if you're not too careful. So what I've come up with is an idea. And the idea is, I've got a little drawing here, and how it works is, that's the base, this bit of steel, simple, this bit of 25mm square, 2mm wall thickness, will be the stand, I weld the stand to the, uh, to the base, I put some holes into it and then I'll tighten it down on that, that point there. But if we look at this a little bit more carefully, then we can see up the top here. I've got a piece of shaft that runs through there. In this case I'm going to use 10mm shaft. Sorry, that's a better end. Yeah, 10mm shaft. So I'll put that down, and what happens is I'll drill a hole like this, through there, and it'll sit through about like that. It's going to have a 4mm hole going through there. And once that in, that's inside, uh, once that I drill a hole through there and I put this little bar make about that long, okay, with the four mil hole through there. I'm going to sit it in there, okay, I'm going to sit it inside there. I'll cut out these, I'll cut out these edges here, but remember it's going through there like so. Then with the four mil hole, in the end, okay, I will um, put it in and I'll weld it. It's a couple of tacks, nothing special. Um, and then what I'll do is then on the end here, this area here, okay, which is that about that distance on the shaft, about that distance on the shaft, okay, which is whatever it is, I'll file it out. So I'll come to halfway of the uh, depth of the hole, I'll file it out, smooth it all off, and then what I'll do then is. Um, then I can put my piece of wood through there and it's got support. I will uh, start this model, I'll start making this and um, when we get to that nitty gritty point we'll do it. There's some fine adjustments that you got to go by and then I'll show you how I can make the adjustment to lift this up so it's cutting a little bit deeper on that round uh, doweling. Okay. Okay, we got to the stage where I finally made the jig up. So I'll uh, show you how it works and then uh, I'll show you what it does. Here we have a bit of round rod. And that's 4mm diameter, very close to it. And I've made up this hole there. Then I set the depth so we, that die runs in relationship to the um, 
little uh, whatever you like to call it here and of course the hardest thing about this job now because I've already tried one is that when you do flats they've got to go on both sides so you've got to get it square on the other side that is quite possible and uh, we'll give it a go okay so we turn it on A little bit of speed. And the direction, the rotation of the uh, cutters is this way. So the feed is this way. So I feed it there so you're not climb milling. Hold that nice and straight. Pull it through. Now what happens here, if you did go the other way and it worked, you would get a problem because the sawdust will get caught up on the opposite side, the feet outside of the hole and it will jam up. So this way is good. So here we are. I don't know if you can pick that up, I'll just turn that off. See the flat, okay. Now what I had to achieve is half a mil either side. So let's see how good I am. The only trouble is this, the variation in the dowel can be a problem. But what I did do, I drilled a hole at four mil and then I passed these all these dowels through, see if they went through. First up I drilled a sm slightly smaller hole because these are a little bit smaller but they wouldn't go through there. So I said well I'll better do it 4mm and that's what I've done. Now what we've got to do is get the flat on the other side. These are for the spokes. Uh, stage guy, Concord stage guy, 1848. And uh, well, one guy you reckon he took 6 hours to put the spokes in. I beg to differ, I reckon he took much longer. This way, this would probably take out oh, about two hours. Two hours of sound, eight of these, oh, seven of these dowels down. And that's what I've got to try to achieve. Right, let's try it. So we put it in there. Now, of course, as uh, we think the depth has it changed? Because once we turn it around, right, eh? This has been relieved. But we'll, we'll see what happens. I tried it and see what happens with the first one, and it was good. So, what I do is I get down and I'll have a look. Don't get too little, I'm too blind. And then That's better. Oh, 
nós ter spray. Draw through. That's flexible. Let's have a look. I don't know if you can see the measurement there, 3 mil. Okay. Now I'll pull the jig apart and I'll show you how it works. First of all you see the hole right in the centre. Then a few calculations and find out Uh, what depth of a cut you want to take off and then make adjustments and I've done it perfectly I uh, put a couple of half I actually have to put a half a mil shim underneath there and that takes off exactly the right amount of uh, material for both sides so there you are there and then you cut her I can show you sits in there like so and not touching I've worked out the calculated and all that anybody can do that they're just their fitting skills got to be pretty good after that and um, yeah tool makers uh, skills got to be pretty good and of course <clears throat> if I ever have to uh, do this again in another series I, I think I'll only make one thing uh, all I have to do I can run it through there if I want to but I don't want to get caught or anything like that with these a new dowel just run it through there and see how it fits if that fits beautiful okay it's going to fit through this hole because that's exactly the same hole size as that and there it goes we do that again we try it there, we try all our, our rods that go through through this and then we know that it will go through there and we know then on the depth of cut by packing by packing the base of this here with these packings like that with two of them it's spot on come out perfect so we'll do that again we'll put it back in set it all up and we'll give it another run Shims under. I must apologise. Look, that's the only position I can put you, otherwise, it's too glary. The GoPro it won't even work here. Right, so you set it up like that, but before you tighten that down, just, just run this uh, into here. Make sure when you do make the space, if you're going to make this, make sure you use 5mm plate. Doesn't matter about this. You don't want any flexing. Not that I think it will be any with that. Right. Now we'll do another one. Crank her up. Cutter's going. Cutters going in this direction, anti clockwise, so we feed in from the side. Not 
nice steady fall, don't stop because it'll uh, certainly tuck in. There's not much flexion there, but what I mean is that is a, a, a drum on a drum, which is a rubber drum. If you stop there, it'll uh, unflex a little bit, just enough. Right, so we turn it around, get the feel of it. Ah, spot on. I would dare say, because I run it through twice. It's super cool. Very faint sand over there. Well, I'm impressed. I'm very impressed with this. I'm very impressed with this. It's turned out better than I ever would have hoped for. I was expecting a few things to happen and all that. I thought one of the things would be out of shape there. Painting on this. I reckon someone would have quite now sorted that out <clears throat> and would have something like this. That certainly saves time. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe and tick the box. This, you know, no one seems to be ticking the box. That you like it. If you don't like it, you can. Tick the other box. It doesn't make any difference. I want to see if there's a bit of life in the YouTube and like to watch my uh, videos. Cheers. Okay, this is the end result of um, of a jig. Now, I worked out roughly. It takes about six to eight hours to do one wheel. It's a lot of work in this, and to do it accurately, oh, it's got to be spot on. So I've got all the jigs and plus a little bit more, and everything's to be spot on what I made. So uh, at least we're progressing.